Well, hello everyone. This is Robin Carter. I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator out of Flower Mound, Texas, and I'm here today to share with you my first set of alternatives using the July paper pumpkin kit called Painted Yes, Painted Petals. So thanks for joining me today. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. And for those of you that are already subscribed to my channel, welcome back. And if you are new and have yet to subscribe to my YouTube channel, I would be so thankful if you could hit that subscribe button. There will also be a button in the end credits of this video where you can easily subscribe. So please consider that. And let me get to some business before we get started. Hot off the press. Uh, Stampin' Up! I just got an email today saying that July 23rd, which will be Tuesday of 2024, they're, they are offering free shipping. So when we switch to hands down, I'm going to show you the benefits of using free shipping day on prepaid pumpkin uh, subscriptions. I also want to mention that going on is also the bonus days. So I I'm assuming those would combine, don't quote me on that, but for every $50 of merchandise you purchase, you get a $5 coupon code emailed to you, and you can only use those coupons next month, August of 2024, and those um, for each 50, so you can get multiple, there's no limit to the number of $50 uh, or $5 coupons you can get, so... I hope that makes sense. I think I need to switch hands down now. And I can show you the benefits of uh, free shipping day. Um, so before I show you that, don't forget going on now is the August subscription period, uh, August 2024 paper pumpkin kit called Time for Cake. Now on my blog, which is robinscreations.wordpress.com, I have even another picture that they've shared out on social media of what a hint of what this kit will be like. So don't miss that. Also, there's a free additional stamp set. So there is that. All right, now for the prepaid day. Now the prepaid day of Tuesday, July 23rd, 2024. Um, it's only for when your total is 75 or more. So automatically you get, I assume, a $5 uh, bonus days. But it's also my favorite time to purchase prepaid paper pumpkin subscriptions. So when you go month to month, you know, and I'm sorry, I have a boo-boo on my finger. It's healing. It's almost ready, uh, almost healed, but I keep it covered. Month-to-month um, -month subscriptions are $25 a month, plus tax if applicable in your area. But during free shipping day, you can purchase prepaid pump paper pumpkin subscriptions. They come in three-month, six-month, or 12 months. There's also a one-month, um, but there's really no savings there. Um, but let me point this out. So on free shipping day, the normal... Well, the three month is $71. So you would need a few more uh, items, some dimensionals or something to add to get to 75. Your kit equals $23.67 plus tax if you have tax. And then without free shipping, say I, you purchased this without free shipping day, the total equals $26.27 plus tax, which is more than month to month. So this one only makes sense during free shipping day. My favorite one is the six month prepaid and it's $130.50, um, which on free shipping day equals $21.75 plus tax per kit versus the 25 plus tax. When it's not free shipping day, that total is $24.14. So it does save you a little bit even if it's not free shipping day. And then of course there's 12 month and you can see the details here. It goes down by 75 cents. So, if you are a paper pumpkin regular, um, I don't know why you wouldn't want to be, this is the time Tuesday to be to buy your prepaid subscription. Now there, are, you can only have one uh, prepaid subscription entered at a time. So say you have a month or two left of your previous one, save that email, take a screenshot. Um, that way you can enter in that code you get for your prepaid subscription once your other two are all gone. So keep that in mind. I'm really excited about that uh, free shipping day. 
that's my favorite time to look through my list and get all those extras I do not have. Okay, now to the fun part and the main part of this video. So you read the title right. I am going to make seven alternatives using the components for one card. So I just happened to start with this card first. So um, these are the components. A card base. Okay, they use this strip and then this strip or this die cut and an envelope. So I'm going to... Um, Get, I have stuff pre-cut over there as well. Also, let me give you a tip about your um, labels. <laughs> Write which one is top, and then when I put it in my stamp positioning tool, which is the Stamparatus, I know this goes in the corner. That way I don't have to sit there and flip and remember which way I did it. So that's just a side tip. You wanna be sure and watch this whole video because as I make mistakes or just things come to my brain, I give you tips and tricks for creating your cards. Um, I guess I can start, I'll go ahead and cut this even though I have one already cut. So you're gonna wanna get out your trimmer. I like these enough that I know I'm gonna wanna do this twice. Okay, so for this pink part, ignore that, that was for something else. Um, you're gonna wanna cut this to four and one eighth. Okay, and remember on your trimmer, I guess I'm out of camera. I'm gonna turn it sideways so you can see. If you're gonna cut, you know, you don't wanna start up here and pull down. You're gonna wanna come from the bottom and go up. That way your paper doesn't accidentally shift. Say you were pulling down and it shifts like that. You'd have a crooked cut. So same thing if you're gonna put it down at the bottom to cut, you wanna go this, this way, okay, not up. So I hope that makes sense. That's just a little trick or tip, I guess, not a trick. All right, so cut that. Now we're gonna wanna take this one and cut it into three pieces. So we're gonna get two of them at one and seven eighths. Okay. Okay, and then we should be left with one about one seven five. Yes. So you're gonna have two at one and seven eighths, leaving one at 1.75. So I'm gonna grab a little envelope. I guess I'll put it in here with my other goodies so I don't lose these because I already have um, those in a separate little envelope. I'll explain these as I go. Okay, and then our card base front, what I did with this, I think I can put my trimmer away for now, is I cut this with the countryside corner dies. And I did use the largest one. Now, if you, I like to give tips for those of you that um, don't necessarily want or have a die cut machine and you're more of a um, casual crafter, you can just cut this off to about, let me see how wide this thing is. It's a little under, so probably three and five eighths inches. Okay, by that's five and a quarter inches tall, something like that. But I took this die and I'm going to show you how I lined it up about like that. I know it cuts off some of the leaves, but I liked add, adding or keeping in there a lot of the um, speckle. So do that. Now I'm not going to do that and take the time because we have seven cards to get through. So <laughs> I'm going to. Um, do the best I can to keep this uh, under an hour. All right, so let me put this up. Okay, now the envelope, we do have some more cutting. I wanted to bring in the envelope as well. Now, what I do is I cut off just a sliver off of each side. So, and I mean teeny tiny, and especially when it comes to this flower image, I'll flip it over and go by that side. So you can see there just a tiny amount so that it opens up. Now I'm gonna flip it to this side so I can see my flower. I can see where it's gonna cut. Let's hope that's enough. You need a pretty sharp blade as well. So make sure you have a new blade recently. All right, so there's our envelope opened up. And then I'm gonna cut this just inside the 
uh, folded line so I don't get any fraying. So you can see just, I don't even know if you can see that pink, but just inside. So that's trash or scrap stamping paper, whatever you want to call it. All right. And then we're going to want to cut this and let me check my folder where I made notes so I don't do it wrong. I think we want this at four, actually this side, four and one eighth inches. Okay. We're going to use that. We're going to end up cutting that because see here we have our flowers and for the flower, we want to cut it at I'm making sure I have the, I should have written that down ahead of time. I know I did in the card probably. Okay. Two, seven, five. Actually, I'm going to have to take this tape off because that's covering up my two, seven, five. And then we're going to trim the top to three and seven eighths. Okay, that just takes a little bit of white off. I'll go ahead and start with this card first. Now this piece here, you're going to want to remove the adhesive. And I've showed how to do this before, but in case you're new to my channel, um, what I do is I get a damp paper towel. I mean, just slightly damp. And then I go along, I usually get out um, my silicone mat or something. So I don't get glue all over and you're just going to start removing it. Now your paper will get wet. So I have already done my first one so that it had time to dry, but that removes the adhesive. And then we're going to uh, trim it down. Actually, you can do this first. Actually, I like to start with a side because it's kind of curved. All right. So something like that. And then I want this, uh, so once you have a square corner, you can cut this, I cut it to like two inches. All right, so that's less glue you actually have to remove. So it's best to trim that first. And then you can get this to about uh, five and a quarter to five and an eighth. It really doesn't matter. Um, on that and you'll see that in a minute. So again, I'm going to set these pieces aside because I already have one cut for us to start to make things go by faster. But that's the cutting you'll need to do. And um, let me go ahead and put everything in one of these bigger ones. That way I don't lose the card base as well as the instructions. Um, Again, I hardly go by the instructions, but if you want to make these just like they are, um, all the supplies are needed that you need are in the kit. Okay, that's the hard stuff. Now, <laughs> it's really not that hard. I hope I made sense. And as always, if you have any questions, you can leave me a comment in the video description box below. All right, clean off my surface there. So in these, five by seven uh, little sleeve or envelopes, I keep all my card components for the card we're gonna make. So I have a thick white card base right here. And then I have an embossed piece of, and I remember to bring the embossing folder, Dashing Designs 3D embossing folder. Now this is new in the annual catalog. And the item number for this is 163483. So you can add that to your um, free shipping day. And I do have a July host code going on as well. So if your order is less than uh, $150, I would really appreciate if you would use this host code. And that way I can send you a special little gift from me for orders of $75 and over, which is what it requires to get free shipping. All right, and then I have that envelope piece here. And here's my note of how big it needed to be, three and seven eighths by 2.75. Okay, and this is gonna be a horizontal card. And you can see here, I have some little 
uh, splatter that I added to that just to give that white something. Now I used, maybe some of you have this in your arsenal. I did look at Amazon and it's currently unavailable. So I'm not able to add a link to it as my favorite things, which these are my favorite things, speaking of Amazon. So I am an Amazon affiliate and I have links to all my favorite things in the video description of this email or this video and all my other videos. Um, I, as I said, I am an Amazon affiliate. So for recommending these products, I get a few pennies back at no cost to you. So if these are something that you think would help you keep your supplies organized, I would really appreciate if you use those links when purchasing these. Okay, hopefully that's the last bit of business. All right, so here we have this right here. And I was just gonna put it on this piece of embossed white Paper. You could add some more white paper if you wanted to, or not white paper, like a pink paper or an old olive. You know what, let's go ahead and try that. I don't have that cut, but I have all my cardstock right here. Here is my Melon Mambo. I don't think I have a, that scrap would work, but it's back when they had the textured paper, so I don't want you to get confused. Let's check out this scrap. We're gonna use it. Okay, so since this was three and seven eighths, I'm gonna cut this at four. Let me get it going the right direction. And you want your trimmer to be flat so you don't have anything underneath it. All right, so let's see, it was two seven five by three seven eighths. So I'm gonna want this to be at least four inches. Let's just have a little bitty border. And then an eighth bigger than 275 is five eighths. And then if you're nervous that that's not right, you can always put your little piece there. And good thing I looked, it's actually two and seven eighths. I went one less. So a border for that would be two and seven eighths. All right, let's set that aside. And that was Melon Mambo. Okay, so let's adhere our envelope piece to this, and I like to use my Tombow multi-purpose liquid glue. Now keep in mind, this is envelope paper, so it's very thin, so you don't wanna apply too much adhesive to that. And like here where I started and got a blob, a tip I like to give people is kind of start it off and scoot it down, and that would make it not as thick right there. All right, so give that a little rub to spread the glue out throughout that piece. Okay, and now we can adhere that here. Um, you could always add ribbon. I chose not to add ribbon on this one. Let's make sure that works out. That works out great. So let's adhere the embossed piece. Now again, if you are more of a casual crafter, you could just put this right on the card base. You don't have to have the embossed layer. This layer is four and one eighths by five and three eighths. Okay, I just now checked to make sure volume was on. <laughs> the mic was working, that would be terrible. Had I done all that and the mic not working. Okay, then we have this piece. Now you can choose, you can put this on dimensionals or not. I'm gonna leave it flat, believe it or not. I, I am a dimensional junkie. I love using them, but we're gonna use them on our sentiment. All right, and you can see that nests right inside that border. So we have our card base the emboss layer, and then our envelope layer, which let me get it straight before it dries. Just like that. Now the sentiment, so I don't feel so bad showing you guys some extra supplies since free shipping day is coming. But I shared this in my translucent floral free online class and 
I love this new stamp set. It's called Comforting Thoughts. I believe it was an online exclusive. And it has this thinking of you, praying for you, and hoping with you. Because I needed a long sentiment here, or I wanted one. And then I brought in another set of dies. I also have an online class video, free video online class using the Unbounded Love. And I used this die right here, this scalloped one. And I have those cut right here. And I actually have it pre-stamped. So to help move these seven cards along, I'm gonna use this um, already stamped one. And since these were photopolymer, I was able to just kind of look over the top. I inked that in Memento and stamped it right on there. So we're going to add this part with dimensionals. I probably need more, but we'll just go with those two. Okay, and I'm going to put that right there. Now, of course, we can add embellishments and whatnot to this card. Um, some of my favorite are the pearls, which obviously I cannot locate at the moment, but they're translucent pearls, and I like adding those here. If you have the Stampin' Blends, you can color those to the blend color you would like, like Melon Mambo or Granny Apple Green, Old Oliver Mossy Meadow, I think, for the greens. So that is my first card, one of seven. So pretty easy peasy goes that one. All right, while we're at it, let's go ahead and use the other envelope cards. Now these, you're obviously you're gonna have three pieces that we cut earlier. I have two made, but I'm gonna make the third one with you. So here is a, a thick white card base with the one of the pink pieces already glued on the bottom. And again, I brought in the Dashing Designs 3D embossing folder. Once I get on an embossing folder, I, can, I tend to use it a lot and I really like that one anyway. Okay, so for this piece, so like I said, you're gonna have one at 0.75. Let's see if this is the 0.75. It is. So you're going to want your top piece. You could do a full panel, but since this is envelope paper, I thought it would look best flat there. So this is four and one eighths by three and five eighths. Okay, when you're using the ones that's a little longer, you can reduce that by another eighth of an inch, like three, seven, five. So that's gonna be my top piece, but I do want to add ribbon. Now I found current <laughs> is this Pretty in Pink ribbon. It's in the online, uh, not online, it's in the catalog, but the item number is 163784. Now here's how I like to do my ribbon. As I get out some tear and tape, which is supposed to be in that box. Let me go grab some, just a second. Okay, I'm back. I grabbed some out of a past paper pumpkin kit that we had. All right, so pick which side. I'm gonna put this on the top, actually, just right along the bottom. Okay, I'm gonna take the back, let me get in camera up more in the center there for you. Take off the backing, which usually I can get that with my nails. I thought I was gonna have to get out my take your pick tool. All right, and then I just put this along the bottom. You can, if you have grid paper, you can use that to help you get it straight. So, you want to cover all the adhesive. Okay, something like that. Okay, and then I put um, tear and tape here as well to help hold down the backing. 
on the back. So that's a little ribbon saving technique as well. You don't have to put it all the way around because no one's going to see this piece. Now you'll notice I let it hang off a little bit and I do that on purpose just in case um, I didn't cut that exactly right. It'll cover any gap um, there. So let's get our Tombow multi-purpose liquid glue on here as well. And adhere this down. And I was so excited. We've had a flower stamp and that goes with the coordinating add-on dies to cut that out very easily. They're called Celebrate everything and I had that on my flyer and I've got so busy <laughs> excited about the free shipping I forgot to share it so also you can add to your little shopping cart for free shipping are the add-on dies uh, they're called Cele every celebration dies the item number is 164991 so the this goes with the July flower this is meant for August and the leaf is for September but I've actually used the leaf which we're getting ready to show in just a second. All right, so there's our base card. And then I wanted to do a little flower design. Now here are some tips as well. Isn't that leaf just beautiful with the de detail? Now this leaf, I die, die cut right out of Granny Apple Green, but then I wanted some variating color. So I just took some white, uh, basic white paper and I used my blending brush this happens to be a small one and I blended the paper with some granny apple green and then I went and die cut it and if you wanted it to be deeper you could go over it again I just find it easiest to color the paper first before you die cut so let's say you really wanted to use granny apple green and you didn't have any but you have the ink you can always make your own with the um blending brushes and your ink on white paper. Okay, then I brought in the Spotlight on Nature. Now I'm going to use this on another card. And it is a great bundle set. It's one of my favorite out of the uh, catalog. And it has these. Now the dies are these circles and there are 12 of them, six in total. So, and I love these using for layers. So if, if you have yet to grab these up, last I looked, they were in stock. I know when it was 10% um, savings on the <laughs> dye bundles, it was out of stock a lot, but they are back. Last I checked, this bundle is on page 69 of the Stampin' Up! Annual Catalog. And the bundle number for it is right here at the top, 163581. So it's a great set. It's one of my very, very favorite out of this catalog. If I had to pick just one bundle I was going to get, it would be this one. So I um, thought I'd share that with you as well. And that's what I use for this one. I use the second largest of this flower. Now my blending wasn't so great, but I'm not gonna worry about it because the flowers are gonna actually cover this up. So I have already stamped and die cut out with the add-on dies, many of these painted petals flowers. I showed in my unboxing, if you missed that, how I line this up with my stamp positioning tool. And then I can just cut white ones and stamp a whole bunch real quickly without having to stamp die cut stamp die cut so if you missed that check that out here are the dies in person by the way now I put a little piece of my favorite things magnetic here just so one they were very stuck to the tape but it's easier to get them and they do stay with this magnet so it's also on my favorite things list all right, so I'm going to color a couple of these um, for you so you can see. Now, I usually work on my uh, glass media mat, but for the video, I don't because it's, it's so shiny, but I love it, and it is available for customers now as well. 
Um, I will bring it into color just because when you use blends, it does tend to bleed through. You get my petals. Set that over here. Now I'm going to use my blends. I do have one where I use watercolor paper or watercolor pencils that we'll get to later. So I'm not an artist, so just bear with me as I um, color this. So I just start out with the deep areas closest to the petal. I'm going to try to work quickly, so I hope this goes well. All right, and then let's let's do this one all dark in the back. And while I have that one, let's just work with this petal as well. It's best to switch as soon as possible for the blending, but for time's sake, I'm just going to Go ahead and do this part. And I've got something under my, it's not level. Oh, it's this embossing folder. Okay, now it's level. And I get out my light and try to blend this out. I like to use the bunt tip. I, I just find I can be more precise with it. Hard to color and talk. <laughs> so, so bear with me. You guys have your kit yet? I, if not, you should be getting it really, really soon. I guess since um the last kits haven't led to so many alternatives. Now this one, I guess my brain was full of creative juices and I got started right away making these. And one more petal. And this one. Okay, and these were the Melon Mambo blends. They are sold as a two pack with the light and the dark right there, and then we're gonna do our leaves. Now, since I have um, granny apple leaves, I wanna make sure I get the granny apple markers. I think that's it. Yes. All right, so let's work with the dark of it first. Um, it doesn't matter, this little petal, I'm not gonna do any blending on it. All right, and so here's what I like to do for the leaves. I just go along the, the center with it and then fill in towards the inside of the leaf. Now this one, I'm gonna do two things. I'm gonna assume this one is turned down. So this bottom part, I'm gonna say is dark. And as I say, I am not an artist. I just <laughs> do my own thing with these. Sometimes I don't even do blending, but I love to color with them. And it works best with the Memento black ink. I will share when we get to the watercolor my thoughts on that. All right. Almost done. And over time, the blend kind of works its way. So it may not look as great right now. But as it dries, it tends to be more of a color shade. And especially right there where they come together is where you'll want to spend the most time kind of scribbling. I call it scribbling. But the great thing about the watercolor pencils is you can go over and over and over and it's not going to peel your paper. So, and I love the depth of color that they add. Okay, so now we can get our card back and we're gonna build our layer with our flowers and our leaves. Now, since I have two different 
colors. I want to put that one there and there. And you know, let's get rid of the glass mat because I know it reflects my lights and that can be annoying. <laughs> okay, my paper, my grid sheet scooted. Let me get it straighter for you. Okay, we're gonna build that layer and one of my leaves went missing. <laughs> okay. Well, well, we'll just get started. Oh, there he is. He's underneath. All right. You don't want glue all over that. So what I do is I just line up my flowers how I want them to go. All right. Something like that at different layers. I think that's going to look good. And then you're going to want to set it on your card, actually, to make sure your leaves aren't going to hang off the side there so that you can get them in an envelope. So that works. So let's take off layer by layer and get to adhering. Now with the leaf, I'm gonna use my multi-purpose glue, but I'm only gonna put the glue here where the um, flower is gonna cover that up. Because if it oozes around, it could get all sticky. Um, if you were going to have them showing, I would put glue dots along more of the solid pieces. Whoops, and there, here's where I get sticky fingers. Should I turn that a little bit? The good thing is it's a circle. So now if you wanted to be real picky and go with the height that those are at the top, you can look at that as well. All right, and now our flower. So this will help hold down the leaves as well. Okay, I'm happy with that. And then we're gonna put this on with dimensionals. And then we're gonna get to our sentiment, so have some things to share with you on the sentiment as well. What do you guys think about these so far? Like I said, I have the other two already made and I'll show you those. I used a different color as well on one of them in case Granny Apple Green is not in your stash or you prefer the other color. I find that they're both nice. They just kind of have a little different feel when you use a different color. So I'm gonna set that kind of on the upper part in the center. Okay, and then here are my other two that I'll show you. So this one I did with a pink background. I thought that was stunning as well. This just kind of calms it down. And this one I did with Old Olive. So you can see they're all pretty, they just have a little different feel. This one I did an old olive in a mossy meadow. I'm gonna have to get my glue eraser in there on that because that stickiness is showing through. And then I added some embellishments. Now, for the sentiments, we have these nice labels that cut out the word. But since I'm making so many alternatives, I knew I would run out. Now you can use a plain label but I created myself a cut file. I do have a scan and cut and I love to bring it in for items like this. Um, so I, I made more of these. Now, an interesting fact. So this label right here, he seemed kind of fat. Okay, when this is the one I made with the words around it. So when I made my scan and cut ones, I made it just a tad smaller. Now, if you have a scan and cut and you're interested in this file and you're not a customer of mine, I can add it to my Etsy shop. These are the ones they provided. And then that way you can, uh, they'll have the file in there so you can download this uh, to make your other labels. Or like I said, you can use just a plain label. It doesn't have to be these fancy cutout ones. But I like to offer that in case you have a scan and cut. But I can add that to my Etsy shop. 
So here they are right here. So let's get out my Stamparatus. This is my stamp positioning tool of choice, but Stampin' Up! is no longer able to sell it. Um, the, the current one on the market is the Misty, and it works it works great. It just you can't use like both sides of the plates like I have here. All right, so let's put this in here in my labels. Like I said, I marked this one as top and then this in the corner so I know this goes in the corner. Now, yes, I already have some other <laughs> things underneath, but it's not going to affect it. As you can see, I have all three all the sentiments here lined up with one space. And I do recommend you <clears throat> take all of them out just so you don't accidentally get ink on them. I'm going to use the ones I cut. This one happens to be my favorite sentiment. Okay, so let's just ink it up. And because I have everything else sticking to it, it pulls it up. But this is my favorite sentiment. I'm so lucky to have you in my life. All right, now I'm going to do, um, I'll just do one of each one real quick with you. I made lots of those labels because I love that one. <laughs> I know I made them. Okay, here's a little squiggly one. Okay, and then the one I made not as fat is this one. All right, we're going to do it in a second because I'm going to take this off because I made my own negative space for it. I know I'm inking off camera, but you get the idea. <laughs> I'm using Memento whoop, Tuxedo Black, and why did that, oh, that didn't line up because it moved it. <laughs> my stamp stick to it and move it okay so you're simply the best and now this one I made my own negative since it's smaller than the original and this sentiment right here okay so now we have some we can play with on all of our cards I guess so here it is and like I said I did it a little smaller I thought that the original one was a little big for that sentiment I guess I can kind of show you what it looks like that's not going to fit perfect but so there's the, the difference it works and I've got real inky fingers now but I just happen to like it a little bit smaller. Does that get in focus? Okay, so we'll have both of those to work with. Let me get my chamois and clean things up. Okay, so we can pick one for this card. Um, I like the longer ones on this, and I'm gonna go with, I'm so lucky to have you in my life because that's my favorite one. All right, so just a couple dimensionals on this. And there you go, and I can add embellishments later. Um, I tend to grab up embellishments, especially when they're on the clearance rack. So I had a bunch of these um, retired ones. Again, the iridescent pearls are my favorite in the current catalog. And I may color those with the blends and add this. So check my um, blog and I'll, I'll have a picture of all of them together as well as um, when I update the title for this, this video, I will have a picture of those as well. Okay, so that would be four cards we've made so far. So out of the whole uh, envelope, actually this was the back of the card base. That wasn't the envelope. My apologies on that. Okay, now more fun. 
we're going to get to the card base uh, part. So I've done a bunch of this ahead of time because I realized this is going to be a long video. So I have a thick white card base. I have that die cut like I showed uh, with the countryside corners. And then I brought in a piece of a dry emboss again with the Dashing Designs 3D embossing folder. Okay, I then took my uh, blending brush and went along very lightly with Melon Mambo along, and you just need the outside because this is gonna cover it up. So let's add this to our card base. Feel that seems to be the front. I can't believe I'm at 45 minutes already. Gotta get moving. I thought about making this a two-parter, but since they all go together, I wanted to just do the best I could to get them all done. So if you like these designs, you can get uh, 21 cards just out of these berry colored ones. All right, now we're gonna use a whole lot of dimensionals on this. I did cut these in half already so that I didn't have to do that, but I may run out. All right, and let's put this on the card base. All right, just somewhere centered. Now, I didn't want to use the one in the kit because I wanted to make it its own card. So I brought in a spotlight on nature stamp. The same thing that I showed with the uh, circle dies, and these two stamps are in that. Now I colored these again with the melon mambo, and it looks like I used, uh, I actually used old olive and granny apple green to give it more color. I did look, <laughs> I Googled pink butterflies, and there is such a thing as a pink butterfly, so I thought that will work. Now these do, the dies in this spotlight on nature do not include one to cut out this flower. I too have a scan and cut file if you're interested in receiving that, that I can put on my Etsy shop. Just leave me a comment or you can email me at robinstampsandscraps at gmail.com and I can add that on there. There are quite a few fees when I list things on Etsy so I tend to wait just for your reply if you have one and then I can add that file out there for you but that is my card for this one so I thought it was the same sort of flower as in the background here I will go through and add embellishments but for time's sake that's what I did with the front of the card base let me set this in here so that's one two three is that six no, it's not. It, that was five. Okay, so again, for time's sake, I did a lot of this ahead of time. Again, a thick white card base. We're going to bring in that beautiful die cut piece. Here is the other part of the envelope paper that we cut off that had the flower on this side. Okay, so we're going to use the other part of it to put down there. And then here's what I wanted to do with the flower because he looked kind of blank there. And of course, I'm going to add this to an embossed layer. I didn't cut that one short, but I'll just go ahead and go with the big thing. So I used the countryside corners to create a die cut. Okay, let's see which one I cut already. All right, it's not quite the same size. You see how it's a little longer? but it helped me not have to cut along the flower pieces. So if you don't have this, you could cut it like a square and then trim off the sides. So this is what I did after I cut, cut it with my countryside corners. So I got my scissors and I put it up at this end where there weren't any leaves. And then I just trimmed it. It might help to glue it on there first, but I'm going to be very careful and try not to scoot it. So just a piece of vellum and I realized Stampin' Up! quit carrying their vellum. So I've added some vellum to my favorite things in case you're looking for some vellum 
to purchase to have if you're out. And the best way I know to adhere vellum is with glue dots. And luckily we have a few places here that are solid that we can put on the flowers. So these are just from Paper Pumpkin Kits in the past. I need some more. I just keep a little tote of them. And you want to get some along the edge. I may have to get the smaller ones for that. Let me get the smaller ones. Whoops. And actually these glue dots do well in case your vellum shows a little bit. It kind of hides it. And probably one along this part. Okay, now to get all the little backings off. This is your take your pick tool, which I think is an essential must have <laughs> for crafting. It helps a lot. My nails are pretty good, but uh, the take your pick tool always works. And I know for those that have artificial nails, um, they're a little thicker, I guess. So they have a harder time getting these backings off and they love using the take your pick tool. Sorry, I'm not looking at you as much. I'm rushing along. And then I'll have to get my creative juices flowing for the other two types of card bases. So it might be Monday or Tuesday, probably Tuesday before I share my next video, which will be the free shipping day. So, all right, so then let's just stick this on the back. Okay, there we go. So let's uh, add some ribbon just like I did before with the tear and tape. I'm going to use that same pretty in pink ribbon that's current in the catalog. Same technique. Let's see, let me make sure I got it straight. Use my grid paper. Okay, and then some piece to hold it down, the tab. hard to work quick on camera <laughs> okay I get to where I can't talk anymore all right whoops okay don't pull that so sideways that it looks crooked when you put it to your card so best to do it straight back okay glad I fixed that now again this is envelope paper so um, you know what I'm going to use tear and tape on this because you don't want it to get wet and bubble up it's very thin envelope paper. I'll just have to be very careful when I'm setting it down on to get it centered. All right, so let's peel off the backing. I'm gonna have lots of trash here along the side. Okay, and center it up there and commit. Okay, now we're going to put this up with dimensionals as well. So what do you guys, are you liking these alternatives? Do you like, um, even if you don't need 21, you might want to make at least one set. I do like to know if you um, actually make these that I'm sharing <laughs> versus just 
myself. Oh, and by the way, my subscribers, I will be making a PDF at some point of all these instructions so that you have that to refer to as well. The video is always the best um, because if I mistype the measurements or something, we do try to fix them when I have my in-person class and I send out a final or at least a message saying that those are different. Oh no, I've got a backing in there. Okay. So here we go. Isn't that pretty just on its own? I loved that. And then we can pick a sentiment. Friends like you make life beautiful. I kind of like that right there. Or you're simply the best. Something like that. You get the idea. So I'm going to carry on. Oh, I did do one other thing. I made a butterfly. Now this is out of the designer tags piece. Um, I blended some white with pink and die cut it. And then I went along and added black. So there are lots of butterflies that are current or retired. So I think I'm gonna add him like right there. I am gonna use, I, I need to use glue dots, don't I? Cause that's gonna be on vellum. So I'm sorry, I don't have time to explain that better, but there are so many butterflies. This one just happens to be in this designer tag set. You could also use, uh, Last month, I'll show you what I tried. The last set of dyes had a butterfly in it and I tried the black and the pink and I just really didn't like it. So, but I thought I'd show you. You could just um, do a white one, something like that. Um, so I thought I'd show you <laughs> even ones I don't care for as much. All right, so that is card six. And now to my last one, and I'm right at an hour, so I'm going to mosey along. So this is with that top part of the envelope that um, is two, mine ended up five and one eighth. You can see it's wrinkled a little bit, but when I adhere this down, I'm going to use my tear and tape. Now here's one that I stamped just on a, a deckled rectangle piece and I did this sentiment as well and I started doing it with my watercolor pencils and for time's sake I did I did that because I knew this was going to be going long and then I'm going to use my blender pen I have one dedicated to pink <laughs> I've got a avalanche over here of cards and one dedicated to green I like to do that that way I don't have to scribble all the nice uh, juices out and I can just carry on. Now it's best to use a thick paper and if you're going to stamp this in, in Memento ink, I recommend letting that Memento dry overnight because it could bleed out. They do recommend you use a stays on with um, watercolor pencils because it might bleed. But this has had a while to dry And this is from the main set of watercolor pencils. Now, if you feel like you need to go back, wait and let that dry. I didn't do the best job. And then go back or otherwise your paper will start to peel. Best just to do a swiping motion rather than scribble like I did with the um, blends like I started to do there. Just use a little swiping motion to blend that green out. Okay, so there is one done with watercolor pencils in case you don't have blends. I have the bigger uh, deckled rectangle die there. Okay, so we can glue this together. I'm starting to lose my voice after all that talking. You know what? I don't know where my <clears throat> Tombow is. Tear and tape always works. I have a pile of cars <laughs> and coloring tools and ribbon down here. I 
And I lose the end of this all the time. All right, let's take those backings off. I hope you um, grab something to drink. I'm going to have to grab a sip here in a second. <clears throat> okay, and let's put this, since it's tear and tape, I need to be... If you just kind of set it down before you press, you're not quite committed. All right, so here is the envelope piece, and I said I was going to use um, tear and tape, so let's use some more. It's hard to see white on white. Let me get on my silicone mat there. Now, I am going to put ribbon because I have this score line here from the envelope. So I'm going to put the ribbon um, on the, actually, I'm going to put it all around the um, embossed piece as well. And I'm running out of tear and tape on this one. Of course I am, right? I'm making a video. So, all right, that one is gone. Yeah, it's stuck to the wood. <clears throat> I'm sure my multi-purpose glue is around here. There it is. Okay. That's how that works <laughs> when you make videos. Stuff gets lost and you run out of stuff. So stick. Okay, I'm having a Dickens of a time there. Always when you're trying to hurry. There we go. Peel it back, that helped. Okay, so let's put this, you wanna put the one with the score line here towards the center because it's gonna be where we're gonna add ribbon. All right, let's, am I straight or crooked? Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, because ribbon wouldn't stick on there too well, I'm going to go against my usual putting tear and tape because I ran out. And I'm just going to put it along the back here. So, one about that long. And then I'm going to I'm going to use scotch tape that I have right under my desk to hold this for you guys. Okay, and then that is going to adhere there. I'm going to add this with dimensionals. And this is card number seven. <laughs> so I really love to hear your comments. Um, I read them all. And also, if you're brand new to my channel and you have decided to subscribe, let me know that and about where you're watching from. I always find that interesting as well. Okay, moving right along with this card, aren't I? <clears throat> so do you have a favorite of these? There we go. All right, so I don't know that I'm going to be able to get all these out. Let me switch back to me, and I'll just go to my blog post or the title page. I should have a picture of all of these. So thanks for joining me today. I hope you've made it to this part. I know it was a long video, but I had seven cards to share. So I really like how I've stretched this kit um, using just the supplies needed to make the intended card from the kit. So the best 
thing you can do to get, tell me thanks is give me a thumbs up. You can share this with your other paper crafting friends uh, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Leave me a comment. I really appreciate those. So anyway, until my next alternative, I hope you all have a great weekend and we'll see you later. Thanks again for watching. Bye-bye.